After surviving and thriving through cancer by using mindful practices and daily meditation, David and Tamara created a website and app, Loving Meditation, that's helping cancer patients and caregivers find peace through meditation. In today's fast-paced world, it's more important than ever to slow down and be mindful of everything around us. The power of meditation is huge, and today we're going to learn about it from two meditation masters. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Today, we're here with the creators and founders of Loving Meditations, a website and app designed with cancer patients and caregivers in mind. The two founders are this lovely couple we have right here, Tamara Green and David Dashinger. Tamara is a certified social worker and a member of the National Association of Social Workers since 1991. She's worked as a psychi psychiatric social worker for 18 years and is now a recognized psychotherapist and life coach in private practice. David is a New York-based composer who has scored music that I'm sure we've all heard before, including music on CBS broadcasts, the Super Bowl, the Masters, and the NFL, so I'm sure everyone has heard of it. He is a Grammy Award nominee and has been a mixing engineer for albums with artists such as Usher and Celine Dion. David is a survivor of cancer himself. He's survived head, neck, and lymphatic stage four cancer. He has had firsthand experience undergoing imaging, diagnostics, radiation, chemotherapy, and surgery. And now David is an international best-selling author featured in Cancer from Tears to Triumph. And his experience has been integral in the creation of Loving Meditations. And we've got this lovely couple here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you, Samantha. It's really nice to be here today. Oh, great. Now, I know I've said a lot about uh, what you guys have been up to, but I'd love to hear in your own words what you're working on right now. Well, quite a few things. We, um, we launched our Loving Meditations app about a year and a half ago. Um, and that's an app that is specifically aimed to cancer patients, survivors, and caregivers. And it's really a simple way to deliver our mindful and guided meditations um, that you can listen to anytime, anywhere. So we're, we're constantly working on the app and, and new content for the app. And uh, what we're really excited about as well is that we've uh, just completed writing a book called Live Calm with Cancer and Beyond. And that'll be launching in the end of November. So uh, lots of good stuff going on over here. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to write that down so that we can put a link in the bio. We want to make sure that we have uh, links for everyone who's watching this so that they can get to all of your information. That's fantastic. Live calm, live calm with... With cancer, and then in parenthesis, and beyond. And beyond. I like that. So it will be available on Amazon and Kindle. It's a, a very intimate story about what we went through as patient and caregiver during our cancer journey, and uh, and it's filled with all kinds of mindful tips and meditations to help, uh, you know, other people going through the same experience with more yeah. ease and calm. Incredible. Mm -hmm. um, now, I don't know how much you, you really want to share, but I'm sure that this experience going through cancer is what inspired you and motivated you to building this entire program. And if you wouldn't mind sharing your story a little bit for our audience mm -hmm. so they know what it is that really got you to where you are today. Sure, we'd love to. Um, we'll, we'll start by saying before cancer was even in our lives, in, in terms of being a personal experience, we were creating meditations as a team. Um, more general topic, but we had a YouTube channel and a nice following, and we had a product called Loving um, Miracle Mondays Meditations. And so we had this experience of creating meditations. Um, fast forward to September of 2013, and um, I went to get a regular haircut, sat down in the chair, barber started snipping, talking about sports, and he's like, what is that on your neck? Um, he pointed to a, something I'd never noticed or felt, a lump on the left side of my neck, and that started the whole journey of what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, took quite a bit of uh, doctor's visits to finally hear those five words that changed our lives, and it was, you have stage four cancer. So it was head and neck cancer in the lymphatic system, and that requires um, pretty arduous radiation, chemotherapy, and ultimately surgery to, um, to take care of it. So it put us, first of all, your life is turned upside down instantly, can't work, can't work out. Um, 
Tamara was instantly put into position of caregiver, not just for me, but for our son who was also just diagnosed with Lyme disease. So we kind of got double, double whammy right there <laughs> out of the box. And so you're, you're scrambling going, what's going on? What just happened? How do I cope? You know, how do I get through this without completely losing it? And so that's where we started turning to our mindful practice. And, and some of it's really simple stuff. Some of it's just shifting focus from the drama and the negative information we're bombarded with to let's, what can we be grateful for? You know, let's, let's just trade off like grateful um, statements of things in our life that we really appreciate. And somehow all of a sudden these, the negativity shifts into something much more positive. So um, that's, the nutshell, you know, Cliff Notes version. Okay. And fast forward to a follow-up visit with the oncologist, and I'll let Tamara tell that part of the story. Yeah, so we, uh, you know, I went to, uh, with David to all of his follow-up, or all of his doctor's appointments and scans. I wanted to be a huge support for him. So this was the office visit or the doctor's oncology visit after the surgery and the oncologist was saying wow you, you know you are cancer free and you had brutal treatment but yet there was something about you that just you made it look a lot easier than i know it actually was what what were you doing what what did you do i know you did something and so david shared that well you know i was doing mindfulness and meditations and visualizations to get through and it really dramatically helped and he said that's what i want for all of my patients and uh, so david and i then <laughs> looked at each other and smiled cuz a light bulb went off wait a minute, we've been uh, creating guided meditations for years. We went through the cancer experience together. We could actually create this specifically for cancer patients, caregivers, and even survivors. And that's how Loving Med Meditation was born. We um, started creating programs you know, specifically for this doctor, and it just kind of took off from there. That's incredible. So our, our, um, our, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What? I was just saying that's incredible. You saw that need. It was so necessary and it helped so much. It's, I mean, that's great that you're helping other people that same way. Right. And, and our, thank you. And our goal is to um, get it into hospitals, you know, so that patients and caregivers can be getting, you know, mindful uh, during treatment or waiting time or, um, you know, even during uh, medical treatments like uh, getting chemotherapy, that sort of thing. So um, we're, we're very excited. The, the app right now is in uh, over 20 countries. So it's uh, really starting to, to spread around the globe. And we're very excited about that. So people are very interested in this. That's fantastic. And the app that you mentioned, they can just get that on the, the app. Yeah, the easiest way to get it is um, we have a, a page called calmcancerstress.com. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a page where you can either choose the iOS app or we have a, a web app that can be viewed on any device, any, any brand of computer, laptop, tablet, smartphone. Perfect. Fantastic. And we'll make sure to put that in the link as well. We want to make sure everyone can find that. Now, when you're starting your own business, you're creating, you already said you had a, a YouTube channel that was doing quite well, but what were some other challenges that you had when you were creating this niche product? Well, one never knows uh, when you're doing something for the first time, you never know what it takes to make it happen. So building an app, for example, um, seems pretty simple, right? But there are so many decisions to make about all the elements that go into it and how you're going to deliver it and how you're going to um, handle the, um, the customer interaction and that sort of thing. So um, it was a lot of fun. We had some really talented guys that helped us do it. Um, but you, you sort of learn as you go, right? You, you sort of, um, there's no, there's no manual for this kind of thing. You just pull, you try to get with somebody who knows what they're doing, like an expert who can show you the way and help you put it together. So it was, you know, we're still learning and we're still evolving it because we want to keep making it better and, and uh, take feedback and make it, make it the best uh, we can make it. 
That's We've also had some interesting moments in our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but what we've learned from this experience of really, I mean, we have been working together for many years, but this kind of took it to a whole new level. Oh, and <laughs> uh, we've really learned to just laugh, just laugh it all off and, and whatever we're taking really seriously. And eh, we're not going to just take it so seriously anymore. And we end up laughing and giggling together. So that's my that's my little advice for couples working together. <laughs> and it's it's also great advice for anyone who's going through like a serious medical challenge yeah. where we're there's a lot of heaviness in the information we're receiving, right? It's like the word cancer has always typically been associated with like death, you know, it's like a people don't like to say the word sometimes. Um back in the day doctors wouldn't tell you you had it because they didn't want you to you know, to know. They, they thought it was better if you didn't know. So we're, we're still a little bit like, it, the word still has a lot of heaviness to it. And it is, it's a heavy disease. Obviously, it does have the um, potential to, you know, to kill you. If, and so, so we get caught up in the seriousness of it and the drama and the negativity. And so it's so important to like lighten up and laugh, you know, and to dance, you know, to, to move, to, uh, you know, to just like, break out of this drama because um, it's not going to help, right? The best, the best thing you can do for yourself is really to, is to, um, is to get into that positive frame of mind. So um, I'm blessed that Tamara always knows how to, how to snap me out of that and get into, you know, you know, to help get you there, you, you need to have a good cry or a good, because, you know, you can't get to the positivity if you're really in a negative state. So sometimes you have to just allow yourself without judgment to just go ahead and uh, cry and scream or call your friend and just vent. And that's okay. That's fine. You know, stomp around. That's fine. It really is. But because it really does help you shift into the positive place. I think that's great so. advice. So often people think they have to, they have to stay strong. They have to have this you know, this wall up when they're going through something like that to know from people who have gone through it, who have experienced it, that it's okay. It's okay to break down. <laughs> you know, you have to have that cathartic release before you're able to move forward. Absolutely. It's scary. You know, it's scary to go through, you know, cancer experience, whether you're the family member or, you know, the, the caretaker or even for the friends, but, you know, especially for the patient, it's very scary. The, the scans, the, it's all really pretty scary. So it's okay. So it's so great that they've got this outlet, this meditation to relax, to calm, to help them get through it. Now, when it comes to your mindset, have you had a mindset shift since creating uh creating this program or were you already in the, the mindset of trying to stay positive and because you were already doing meditation? Well, uh, both David and I have, uh, you know, a, a history of meditation and, um, uh, I'm, would you say that I'm the more positive one, honey? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a real optimist. I always have been. Um, but, uh, and, and I really don't, you know, when I'm coaching my, uh, my psychotherapy or, or my coaching clients, I'm, I don't, you know, subscribe that they always walk around being positive because if you're not feeling positive, it, it doesn't help. It, you need to just be real and authentic and just, you know, say it exactly how it is, whether it's in your journal or to a friend or to your therapist or coach or whatever. Um, but there's no question that, um, you know, I, I started back in the late eighties of yoga and the meditation was connected with the yoga and that's how I began my spiritual practice. And, um, it, you know, it took years of, you know, just being very devoted, uh, to, to a practice of yoga and meditation and, you know, moving my body and, yeah, um, so many I've done so much work on myself. It's ridiculous how much I've done for myself in terms of personal growth and therapy and analysis and the rest of it. 
but um, it, what I'm finding lately, you know, in the last maybe 10 years or so, um, it's faster. It, you actually, people get better faster. They get calmer faster these days. It, it, it almost feels like energy is just faster. And so even improvement, the process of being on your self-discovery journey is quicker than it used to be. So I don't want people to sit here and think, oh, it's going to take years for me to feel better or whatever, or not afraid. It, no, not anymore. No, there's just, uh, you know, especially if you have like a, some kind of a mindful practice like meditation or nature walks or, um, you know, people are doing mindfulness, mindful um, things all the time. They just don't realize it. Maybe they're an avid reader or, or sports fan and they're just so completely involved in what they're doing. That is mindfulness right there. That is like a, your own little meditation that you're involved in. That's great. I was noticing now we do a lot of reading of different self-help books and self-personal development books. And one of the ones that's very popular came out, Tools of Titans. Uh, and we read that at the end of last year. And it, it's all these interviews with high achieving people. And nearly every single one of them mentioned meditation. It's, it's all over the place nowadays. And I was wondering if you, uh, if you knew why it's becoming so popular why is it at the forefront now meditation has been around for ever <laughs> uh why is why is just now people starting to get a hang of it i think it's um and and by the way i, I listen to quite, quite a bit of tim ferris and it is a common thread throughout all his interviews and his yeah. books um it's it works it's simple it's um it's really a low cost low risk kind of uh practice and um and just to digress slightly, when we hear the word meditation, sometimes we conjure up this image of like someone sitting on top of a mountain in Tibet with, in full lotus position, you know, with a guru by their side, and they have to be quiet for 20, 30 minutes. And it's not necessarily, meditation is not necessarily that, although that could be it, but it could be listening to a guided meditation, which means just getting your device, putting on your earbuds, pressing play, or some of the mindful practices, we've, we have a few tools that we like to share. Some of them you could do sitting in traffic. You could do in the waiting room, waiting for the doctor. You could do online at the, at the pharmacy. Um, those are things like the hobbies that make you so present. And that means kind of shutting down the thinking mind that is constantly, constantly churning thoughts. Like we, we think something like 60,000 thoughts a day. And, you know, how many of those are actually helpful? Um, when we can quiet that, then other great things start to happen, right? So um, it doesn't have to be 20 minutes on top of a mountain in Tibet. It could be like, you know, sitting in your car, you know, while you're in gridlock and just breathing or just feeling present in your body or just looking around and describing objects. We have a lot of different really simple tools that are um, so useful in any time, any place, and people probably wouldn't even know you're doing it when you're doing it. I love that. Do you have, I mean, in such a busy world right now, people think they, if they want to meditate, they want to do it quickly. And like you said, there's so many options out there that we're unaware of. Do you think you could maybe share with us like two or three really quick tips that we could put into practice in our everyday lives? Absolutely, yeah. Sure. Um, so uh, meditate, uh, breathing is one of the fastest ways to calm yourself, right? So, you know, when, where, where energy go, I mean, where your mind goes is where energy goes. So a lot of times we're thinking, 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 and all the energy is up in here. So a great easy technique is to breathe in and let's all do it right now so we breathe in and fill up your lungs completely exhale out of your mouth and purposely move the energy down 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 your body down your legs and out your toes to the point where you feel your feet right now breathe in again all the way and then exhale and consciously move the energy down, down, down your body, down your feet, 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 feet. Good. And one more. Breathe all the way in. 
exhale and move that energy down and focus on your feet, feet and how your feet feel next to your shoes or in the uh, floor. Just feel your feet, feet, feet. Good. That's all we did. Now, now can you just feel the difference? The, it's like instant relaxation. Yeah. Yeah. You consciously moved the energy down and got grounded, right? Because when you're up here, it's hard to kind of feel steady and grounded. You're up, you, all the energy's up here. I call it hothead. <laughs> and we want to lower all that energy into other parts of our body. That's one quick uh, tip. Do you want to do maybe a describe one or something? Um, well, here's one that um, for anybody that is going through medical treatment, and um, it doesn't have to be a cancer patient. Uh, a lot of people will have to get scans for injuries and, and other kinds of medical problems. So MRI is a very, uh, can be a very stressful pro uh, diagnostic because it's a claustrophobia inducing mach machine. Um, so I had an experience where I was given some medication that made me even more like stressed out than I would have been. And I was about to pull the plug on, let me out of this MRI. And I remembered, let me just put all my focus on my breath. And um, it's really a matter of becoming the observer and just being totally observant of the air, gently going in and out through your nose or through your mouth and thinking of focusing on nothing else. And so I did that for the first five minutes and then I was no longer having these panicky thoughts. Um, and I was able to get through the whole rest of the scan really relaxed. But um, because I took my monkey mind out of the, out of the equation, um, that just made a huge difference. So it's really where do we put our attention, right? Where, where are we putting our attention on? Are we letting the thoughts drive our, our focus and our attention to the past or the, or the future, which is something we really can't do a whole lot about? Or are we being like right here in the moment? So those two breath techniques are very useful to put yourself right here in, in the now rather than forward or backwards in time. And then what I'll add to that is that, you know, we're human beings. We're, we have thoughts. We're just going to have thoughts. It's okay. It's really no biggie to have th thoughts. But the idea is just to recognize, oh, I just had a scary thought. Okay, now let me focus on the breath again, breathing in breathing out. Oh, another thought. Oh, but that's okay. You know, I'm allowing that and then get back. So you just keep refocusing back to the mindful tool that you're doing at that moment, like breathing. I love that. It's being purposeful about what you're thinking, making sure that you're focusing on yourself and what you need at that time. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. I'm yeah. excited. <laughs> great. Is, I mean, that's this is something that is so needed, and I, I think that people are going to learn a lot, definitely. I wanted to ask you, what three skills do you think you have that have led to your success? Mm -hmm. Great question. Well, uh, for me, it would be, uh, I ever since I was five years old, uh, or five years old was the first time I kind of had that recognition that I had this ability to just uh, be present with people and just, I just knew what was going on or I knew what to do. I would notice that, you know, my mother or father was upset and I would just be present with them. It was just interesting. And I uh, noticed things shifting if I was just present or if I asked certain questions or I asked if I could help or, you know, mommy, I love you or whatever. Right. And I started picking that up when I was really young and have used it um, throughout my practice. So that's a, I get, would you call that a skill? I, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> it just feels so natural. It doesn't feel like a skill. Um, that's one. The other is I, I am a, um, Again, is this a skill? I don't know. I'm a glass half full kind of gal, and I I tend to see the positive. I'm pretty optimistic. Um, there's just you know, if I'm down, I, I'm not down for very long because I really can you know shift into oh, but you know, it can get better than this, or how does it get better than this? And it does. You know, that's the other thing. 
Um, I guess the, the, the third one I would say um, is when it comes to meditation, uh, I was just told this the other day because we, we teach um, uh, free workshops in hospitals and cancer support centers. Um, we, we love uh, being a contribution to those going, you know, family members or cancer patients going through uh, cancer or even survivors. Um, but I, I just, I, I'm really just a conduit when I'm going into meditation and guiding a meditation. And um, I'm just able to uh, work with whatever is coming through me. And so uh, just the other day, it was just, you know, four days ago, um, one of the recipients in, the, in this workshop that I was teaching, she said, just, that was so powerful. I mean, she really walked in looking bad. She looked bad. She's just had surgery. She looked ashen. She was not looking good at all. By the end of the meditation, she was you know, pink and, you know, smiling and refreshed. And she said, I felt, I feel so much better, whatever you are doing. And I, I kind of don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes I'm just saying whatever's coming through me. So I would, yeah. I guess that's a skill too, right? That is, that is. <laughs> Great. Um, Those are going to be hard to follow. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, um, yeah, actually we, we wrote about this or I wrote about this in, uh, in Live Calm with Cancer and Beyond. A little bit um, trying to describe like how not only how we were were able to build our business but also how I was able to kind of approach cancer um, the cancer journey as a uh, you know, like a epic survival adventure and um, so you know I like to I like to look at things like that a little differently um, and I made a 100% commitment I think whatever I whatever I set my mind to I make that 100% commitment to to do whatever it takes to you know, make it happen or get through. And I made my that commitment to, um, you know, when we, when we start a new project, whether it's writing a book or building an app, I also believe strongly in, and doors are always like opening for us. And sometimes it's a little bit, you know, frightening to think about going out of the comfort zone and through that door into something new and unknown. But I have always kind of taken that step and gone through the door and usually what's on the other side is some of the greatest stuff that you know if you sit back and judge it and figure it out in advance it's you're never going to go there but if you kind of like just have faith that everything's going to work out I go through the door and some amazing things have definitely um, you know come up that I've, um, I've been blessed in my life to experience so um, I, that's really important and um, and just let things go like Sometimes we get so attached to something, whether it's our our opinion or something we own or even a person. If we can just like start to let go of stuff because we can't hold on. Nothing's permanent. Things are constantly changing. So um, being open to letting go is, I think, a very, um, very useful skill if you can do it. Yeah, those are all really good skills. <laughs> I wanted to clarify something. Now, your app that you have, is it just for people who have cancer and cancer survivors, or would this be useful for other people as well? There are, um, some of the content is cancer specific, like uh, meditation for chemo. Um, and I'd say most of it is not, um, could be really used by anybody and not even just medically um, people that are in medical um, journeys, but um, in general in life, we talk about, um, we have meditations or mindfulness for sleep, improving your sleep, for um, overcoming fear, for overcoming judgment. And um, so we, you know, although some of it is in that genre um, for the cancer, I think most people could find something very useful in the app. Fantastic. Yeah. The, it's a, the app is, you know, you can go on as a patient or as a caregiver and, or, or you can, you know, uh, have access to all of them, but the caregiver ones, there's a lot on, you know, energizing yourself, revitalizing yourself, um, feeling powerful or feeling, it's kind of like a confidence boosting, 
Um, and uh, we also have mindful tips that are really quick one minute tips on. So let's say you're on the train and you're stressed out because you got to have a presentation to give at work or something. It's perfect for that kind of stuff too. So there's quite a bit for everybody. Perfect. So anyone, anyone who's watching can go ahead and check that out, download it and give it a shot. Um, because meditation is helpful all around. And I wanted to learn a little bit more about the two of you. So I want to know who inspires you. Hmm. Actually, David inspires me. <laughs> it's so true. He's, uh, he blows my mind every day. It's just amazing. Um, he is so, you know, if you, if you actually go to the app and see uh, what he does, so what I do is I write the meditations and, um, you know, it's usually my voice. Some, sometimes the meditations are David's voice, but he composes the music, which is just, it reaches your soul. It's just stunning. And then he puts these gorgeous videos together because some people are very visual. So we decided not to have just audio, but visual, I mean, video as well. And he just does an amazing job. So he, inspires me every day every day it's amazing i love that <laughs> <laughs> well likewise i'd have to say Tamara inspires me too like just uh, her you know her positivity her energy and um her you know i think anybody that's in her presence just feels better and and more um just a really great energy so um you know i'm blessed i just you know, I think we we work really well together as a team just because we are we're different. We're really not that similar, but our differences are actually our strength. So um, it works in a positive way. And they're perfect too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what book would you recommend our viewers to read? Um, the Linda Carlson? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you, you know. Well, we, we were actually very inspired um, by a book that um, we have to look up the exact title, but it, it is a mindfulness book. Um, I think it's called Mindfulness Based Cancer Recovery by Linda Carlson, PhD. And she and um, Michael Spica, I think, is the other author. Um, they wrote a whole book about mindfulness for cancer patients, and we thought it was fabulous. It's got mutations in it, and it's got a lot of um, really good information for anyone who's looking to, um, who's coming from a cancer experience, who's looking to build a mindful practice. She also has a, Dr. Carlson has a TEDx talk mm -hmm. that's very inspiring as well. Oh, great. I love TED Talks. Yeah. <laughs> Lin Linda Carlson. That's fantastic. All right. If you could have dinner with anyone, Alive, dead, fictional, nonfiction, whoever, who would you dinner with? It's a fun question. Yeah, this is completely out of this genre, right? Yeah. I, I love a I love a TV show called Wheeler Dealers, and uh, it's a British it's a British TV show where the one guy buys the car is like a car that's like twenty years old, and and his mechanic Ed fixes them. And I just love Ed. Ed is the British. He's just got this crazy hair. He wears orange t-shirts all the time. He's an amazing mechanic. And he's just so mellow. Like you just feel great when you're watching him. So I'd love to have dinner with, with Ed. Uh, Ed China is his name. <laughs> I'm going to have to look him up. <laughs> I love the show too. It's just, you just, it's one of those things where you just completely zone out on, you know, I don't know if there's just something about it that's very relaxing. So would you join that that dinner? I would, no question <laughs> about it. But I I would want to, what's the other one's name? Mike Brewer. Mike. Yeah, yeah Mike and Ed together would be good. Yeah, I I would like them both there. <laughs> oh my goodness, we'll send them a copy of this and see what we can do. Right? Yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll end up having dinner together. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm going to check out that show and see what it's all about. Uh, finally, I wanted to ask if there's anything that I've missed. Uh, talking about, I want to know uh, what your your newest endeavors is and where people can find you and get hold of you. And then if there's anything else I missed. Roman? Yeah, well, I'm wearing pink today just uh, because it's October and um, I'm 
called uh, I'm part of this program called Real Men Wear Pink, and it's an American Cancer Society. Uh, we're raising money for breast cancer awareness in the month of October and wearing pink every day. So um, that's something else that we're doing together and supporting. Um, but our main thing is we are we are doing some um, public speaking for groups. We're our book is launching the end of November, Live Calm with Cancer and Beyond. Uh, we'll be doing more around that. And, um, and our app, those are the big things that we're, uh, we're involved with right now. Yeah. That's great. So we're going to make sure that all of those links are on our site so everyone can come find you. They can find out from your website, I'm assuming, where you're speaking, if they want to mm -hmm. come see you. And where are you located? Where are these speaking arrangements happening? Well, we're, we're kind of traveling all over. We were in Los Angeles giving a presentation. We, we live in New York, so uh, most of our um, uh, free workshops that we give, you know, cancer treatment centers are either in Connecticut or New York. Um, but we're open to traveling to places. We're going to Chicago soon, you know. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. So no matter where you are watching from, maybe you can see these guys come into a... Yeah, in, invite us. We'd love to come. <laughs> there we go. All your contact information will be in there. And I thank you so, so much for taking the time to sit and talk with me. This really does mean a lot that you did this. So thank you. Oh, it was our pleasure. It was uh, really nice to, to have this conversation with you, Samantha. <laughs> Thanks. And that's a wrap. What did you think? Let us know your favorite tip that you learned in the comments below. And if you know someone that could use a little bit of inspiration, go ahead and send them the link to this video. I know they'll appreciate it. Below, I've included everything that we talked about during this little interview. So if you have any questions, be sure to look in the links below. I've made it super easy for you. And as always, don't forget to click subscribe right down in the corner so that you never miss another video again. Every single Wednesday, we'll be releasing new interviews from experts and influencers influencers. So don't be afraid to get the information here first, straight from the source. And don't forget we've got life lessons from your TV shows on Mondays and difficult behaviors, or right now we're doing Myers-Briggs breakdowns on Fridays. Finally, don't forget it's open enrollment for our Millennial Magnetism course. Click the link in the description for details to discover how you can unleash your inner awesome. And until next time, ciao for now.